Welcome to the podcast editing and support show. My name is Dave. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go. We're going to start the episode right now. Happy to have you here. Let's do this. Hey, welcome back to the show. Glad to be here with you. Hope things are good in your world as you build your podcast business, as you find a podcast to work with, or as a podcaster looking for a great editor. I hope everything is going well with you and everything in your daily life. We are looking at a topic that comes up quite often around pricing. Now, it's an icky feeling when we start talking numbers. We love talking about the creative side of editing. We love the creative side of being a podcaster. But there comes a point where we got to start talking numbers, people, because I've, as I've noticed, when I go to the gas station and fill up my car, they don't want to hear how great it is that they that I praise them for having a gas station. They, I don't go in there and compliment them on their customer service. No, they, they have their hand out. I'm supposed to put money in their hand because I bought gas. So there's a transaction that's supposed to happen, and it's normal. Your car runs out of gas, you put gas in it, you pay money. That's kind of how that works. When you run out of food, you go to the store and you buy food. You don't just push your cart up to the cashier and go, you're doing a great job. I'm going to take this all for free now. And you walk out. That's called theft. And what's happening in podcasting, I've found, is there's a there's podcast hosts that don't understand at all what it takes to do the editing and what it takes to have an editor on their team. And they're looking for people that want to be paid basically nothing. And they want to basically take advantage, in some cases, of people who are experts in their field and they don't want to pay. They just don't want to pay. I quoted somebody just recently and I... This is a client I really wanted to work with, um, and I know their situation, and I know that I've, they could really use a little extra hand in the temporary time. So for the next three months or so, they could really use, you know, a discount. So I sent them off a proposal, and I discounted my rates below what I would normally charge anybody. And they completely ghosted me. Like, we've had conversations, we've been going back and forth, we'd have this great dialogue, and then boom. As soon as I sent that deck with my prices and how I did it, and I even sent them a screenshot of what the average would be for this service they're asking for, nothing. They're gone. They probably went to Fiverr or something where you pay somebody peanuts and you'll get that kind of quality work in some cases. So, oh well, that just helps me to, to realize that's one less frustration for me to not have to work with somebody who doesn't value me and what I can do to help them with their podcast. It goes beyond just cutting out ums and ahs and throwing a music on and on the intro and on the outro. I can help you in so many ways with your podcast beyond that. So anyways, their loss, I move on and I just keep doing what I do. The one topic that comes up quite often though is how do we, how do we talk about our pricing? Because I hear podcast editors talk about what their hourly rate is, and then I hear people who talk about their project-based rate. So is there a difference? Like, what is preferred? What should we be using? What works for me? What works for you? I'd love to know. Uh, but I wouldn't, I'm wouldn't. i leaning more to project-based pricing over hourly rate pricing. And I have a great example for you, something that just happened for us in our own life, and how the two varies. And... Uh, yeah, let's jump into it. Thanks for listening. So my wife and I, in the last little bit, we've been leveraging the equity in our home and buying rental property. We have three adult children. Our goal when they were little tiny kids was that we would have rental properties for each of them by the time they reached adulthood. And that meant three properties, three separate rental units. We have condos that we're buying. Uh, we have a one-bedroom, we have a three-bedroom townhouse, and now we're looking at our third one we're going to be buying in the next two weeks or so. So all three of our kids are going to end up with the combined real estate portfolio that we're building for them, and that's part of their inheritance, a big chunk of their inheritance. We really don't benefit from it. We just pay for everything. They're going to get the benefit, which I'm happy to do that for them because I love my kids. So... In the process of doing this, the three-bedroom townhouse we just bought was a estate sale. 
and the person that lived there in the past did their own plumbing, for example, and liked glue, uh, like a lot of glue on the pipes. And so we had to like gut all of that out and redo piping and all this stuff, plumbing and leaks and just on and on and on, fixing up what a hobbyist was trying to do on their own. And we hired a plumber and our plumber came in, quoted us for the job. We never talked about his hourly rate, just said, here's what you need. Here's the, here's how much it costs. Same thing with the electrician had to come in, had to do a bunch of rewiring, changing out some light fixtures, rewiring the dishwasher. Um, there was some breakers going off and on. There was a burn mark on a wire that he had to look at. And he just, went through, wrote down everything that we asked of him, came back with a number, and that's the number. So no talk of hourly rate, like, I'm going to come in, it's going to take me this long to do this. No, it's, this is the job rate. This is the cost to do the work you've asked me to do. And take it or leave it. Like, there's other electricians, you can go hire them, there's other plumbers. Go find another one if you want. But I'm here, I have all the skills and talents and abilities to do what you need done, Here's the number. There was no negotiating. There was no, can you take off this? Can you do this? Right? And anything that we added, if we found something after, the price went up. It didn't stay the same. If we found another light switch or another problem, then it was added to the bill. It wasn't encompassed in the original quote. All of these things kind of lead to podcast editing and support. Because we're going to sit in front of a host, a podcast host, who's going to nickel and dime us, in some cases, down to the smallest amount possible, to the point where you won't even make any money doing this, and it's going to cost you time, money, uh, and all of that, to service an account for a podcast host that doesn't value your time. So instead of saying, my hourly rate is, and talking on hourly rate plane of conversation, I would much rather for you to use a job rate. Because then it's not based on how long it takes you to do something. When you're a new podcast editor, and you haven't done this before, when you're a new electrician, everything takes longer, because you don't know what you're doing. And you haven't to have the chops built over time, the equity of time, where you've learned how to do things faster and more efficiently, you have better tools, all of these things come into play as an electrician and as a plumber where you get faster. But because you get faster doesn't mean you should be paid less, right? You've got 20, 30 years in, in an, as a, a tradesperson. That doesn't mean you get paid less because you can do it faster than somebody who's been doing it for a week. It takes them 10 hours. It takes you 15 minutes. Don't you deserve the 10 hours worth of pay? The fact that you could do it faster, better, and with better tools is because of your experience. So you shouldn't be punished for experience and being effective and efficient. You should be rewarded for that because you are doing the best possible work. So as a podcast editor and support professional, we really do grapple with this whole question of how to price our services. Hourly rates might seem straightforward, but project-based pricing offers significant advantages for both you and your clients. And here's how this works. First, the value of expertise and not just time. Consider the scenario. Podcast host hires you to fix a complex audio issue. You spend 15 minutes, you diagnose the problem, and you solve it. Drawing on all of your years of experiences and everything you've done in the past, should you not be, should you bill just on that 15 minutes of time. I talked about the plumber that came in and the electrician. Electrician came in, it was like 2,500 bucks for the work that he had to do. Could I have done the work? Um, not and left my house standing and not burning down? No, because he's skilled in that. That's what he does for a living. I don't do electrical for a living. So he has better knowledge, tools, up to date on all the codes. He knows everything about everything. And when his work was inspected by an outside source that came to check on whether it was done properly, it was perfect. Because why? Because he's an electrician. <laughs> That's what he does. So the number he gave me was like 2500 bucks. That was the price. Right? And there was no bartering. There's no arguing. There was 
that's what I need. This is the price. And I don't understand why podcast hosts don't get that. When you reach out for a podcast editor, you can't just be like trying to find the lowest number. What does that say about the quality of the work? What does that say about your results? Are you going to be happy with the lowest rate compared to the best service, the best quality, the best knowledge in the space? You get what you pay for. You really do. You're not just paying for the part that they're bringing or installing in your house or the wire they're fixing, but you're paying for the experience and the ability to solve a problem that others can't do. You need to value your time. And again, if you go into this hourly rate conversation, just because you have an hourly rate doesn't mean you're efficient. It could take you three times longer than it takes someone else. So in that sense, the podcast host is being punished because you're slow. You don't know the tools. You don't have experience. So they're paying you to train. They're paying you to get experience. I understand you need to make money, but your lack of experience shouldn't be a financial burden to a host. And for hosts... You shouldn't go to the lowest common denominator and expect the best results. And don't ghost people. Okay, that's just rude. Please, when you're speaking with a podcast editor, talk about the pricing. See if there's things you can do. If you can't af- afford their one hour's worth of time for that project, maybe do two 30-minute episodes. Break them up in half and cut the price in half. There's alternatives. It's called a conversation. And it's something that we can all do in podcasting. So as an editor, you want to make sure that you're doing a job rate quote over an hourly rate because hourly rates are a slippery slope to the bottom and people are just going to compare your hourly rate to someone other's hourly rate. So if you come in at 60 bucks an hour, or I've heard somebody like $250 an hour is what they charge. Jeez, there's no way I could afford that as a podcast host. As, as I work full-time and do this on the side, nope, they're not my person. Uh, people will say 60 bucks, and they'll be like, dang, that's way too much money. And then you get people down to 5 bucks or 20 bucks or 25 bucks per hour. It just becomes a, a competition for the lowest price. And you're not guaranteed anything as far as quality or expertise or results when you're just chasing the dollar amount. So go for a price model based on the job. Try it. And I'd love to hear, what is your thoughts? Are you an hourly rate person or are you a job rate person? Because the more information we get about this, the more podcast editors we can help because the whole pricing thing is just weird right now. And one last thing as I'm kind of wrapping this up, I just also signed up a new client and they're also in an interesting place in their life. uh, They need help with their podcast. They physically can't do it due to some health issues. And we've arranged that I'm going to work with them and get them caught up to where they want to be. And then once we're caught up, then we'll have a conversation on the next steps forward. But instead of them being frustrated and giving up on podcasting, I'd much rather step in, help solve a problem. I'm going to do it for free in the next few episodes to help them get caught up. But then we'll have a conversation after that. They'll see the results of my work. They'll realize I'm a good person and that I really do want to help them. So that might be an alternative for you as a new editor looking for for new clients. Don't be afraid of working with a charity. Don't be afraid of working with somebody who really desperately needs your help. And use that as a way for, if anything, at the end of helping them with a few episodes, maybe they can give you a review that you can post on your website, um, a recommendation. Maybe they know somebody. And that could be the next thing. You can also, one little tip, is when you're talking pricing with somebody, Tell them that if they help you find another person that you can edit for, a new client, that you'll give them a piece of the the money the new client pays, you'll give it back to that person. So in effect, if they give you enough clients and enough potential new clients that sign up with you, they could in turn get free editing because they're going to make money back by recommending more people to you. So if they're really nervous about paying for editing, tell them. I definitely would love for you to get me new clients and I'll give you a piece of the money that comes into me every month as long as they stay connected with me. 
And that would be a great way to offer free editing to somebody who's on a really tight budget. They know people, they'll talk about you and they'll share your services with others, especially if you give them incentive to do so. So if you have any questions around creating your podcast editing business, uh, any topics that you love me to cover here on the episode, we're also going to be talking uh, coming up in the next episode around the benefits of project-based pricing to kind of extend on what we're talking about here and kind of like how to implement a project-based pricing system. A couple new episodes coming up for you in the future. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being here. And good luck on all your business stuff. Let me know. I'd love to know the name of your business, what you do, who you serve. Reach out to me. Links in the show notes. Thanks for listening to the podcast editing and support show. Visit us at podcast editing and support.com. Podcast editing and support.com. We would love to help you find a great podcast editor. Or if you want to hire us, we would love to work with you. Podcast editing and support.com. Catch you on the next episode. Take care. Hey!